Greetings, grade nines. I am going to just use this opportunity to draw up a demonstration video on how we're going to post some transactions to some journals. Uh, I know a lot of you have been working through identifying how to know which transaction goes to which journal. And I trust that this uh, example and this question will uh, boost your confidence in, in doing just that. So you'll see that the, the question that I've got in front of us Question one, it says, required, prepare the following subsidiary journals in the books of Costa Shimane stores. Do not total the journals, so don't waste time doing that. Firstly, they ask you to do the cash receipts journal, and they ask to provide columns and then of the analysis of receipts, bank, sales, cost of sales, and debtors control, as well as sundry. The creditors journal asks for columns, creditors control, stationery, packing material, and sundry. And then they ask for the debtors journal, which obviously has the sales and cost of sales columns. Bear in mind, there is no uh, need to draw up the cash payments journal. So if you find any transactions that require using the cash payments journal, do not put it into either of those three. You would ignore it. It does not belong. Also, they've given you the creditors outstanding balance on the 1st of June that you are currently owing Boabu traders a thousand bucks. And that in terms of debtors, W. Scholl owes you 700 and Al Semane owes you 2120. Okay, so that's the information to just start the question off. We're going to hit it with transactions for the June 2, 2018 or 16, 2018, I'm not sure. Okay, number one, are you ready? As we read through all these transactions, you must decide what journal we are going to go to. So, first of all, M. Norman, the owner increased his capital contribution by 50,000 Rand by depositing a check into the current banking account of the business. The bank statement confirmed this entry. Okay, so just by identifying and looking carefully at this question, I hope you'd agree with me that we are going to head to the cash receipts journal, which is displayed now on the screen. So, from the information, M. Norman is the chap's name, so we can write M. Norman in the details. Carrying on to read, it tells us that this happened on the first. So there's the first. And the bank statement told us about it. So the document number for this transaction is BS. They might tempt you to be writing the word check stub in there, but the check stub is important to note is not the source document. The bank statement is. The folio column is reserved for either debtors or creditors, and M. Norman is neither, so we can ignore the folio column. He is giving us 50,000 Rand, and it's going straight to our bank account, so we're not going to put anything under analysis of receipts. The first case of the 50,000 Rand would go to the bank column, because he's giving us the money straight into our bank account, we do not receive it in cash. We, we then have to decide where else are we going to put this 50,000 rand. Does it have a column that we can allocate it to? And the answer is not really. We're going to send it to sundry accounts. So sundry accounts over here is going to get 50,000 rand and it is going to go to capital. Please do not write the word capital contribution or capital increase. The account name that we are dealing with is capital full stop. Okay. That is the first transaction done, and we can go read the second one. On the fourth, we issued the following invoice for credit sales, number 23 to El Semane, 240 Rand, and the profit markup is 25% on cost. What journal will you go to for the fourth? The answer, you are going to go to that debtor's journal over here. Because it tells you that you issued an invoice for credit sales, it means you are selling on credit to someone else. So the document number in this case is invoice, and the number they gave you was 23. This is happening on the 4th. El Semane is the name of our debtor. Does El Semane have a folio? He's the second debtor in our list of debtors, so D2 is the folio entry. We are told that we sell to him to the value of 240 Rand, so that is our sales entry in the sales column. Then we've got to work out what the cost of sales is. Right, from the question, it told us that there's markup of 25% on cost. 
So if you grab your calculator, the formula or the way you're going to work it out is you're going to say 240 Rand, which is what he's getting sold to, the value of his sales, times 100 over 100 plus markup. And the markup in this case is 25%. So 240 times 100 over 125. And that's going to give you the cost price of 192 Rand, which will be placed in the cost of sales column like that. And that is that transaction complete. On the 13th, it says that Guavu traders, and we've seen them before, they were a creditor of ours mentioned earlier on. They sent us an invoice, S234, which we renumbered 67 for the following items that were purchased on credit. Okay, so just before we get into this transaction, what journal are we going to go to? We are going to go to the creditor's journal because we are buying on credit. So the document number has been renumbered, it says, to invoice seven, uh, 67. The, why, the reason why we renumber them is because we would possibly receive all sorts of different numbered invoices from all sorts of suppliers. So for our books, it might be easier just to number them logically or numerically, starting maybe from 67. Okay. The date here is the 13th, and Wahoo Traders is the details entry. The fact that he's been mentioned before as a creditor in our creditors list makes him C1. We now go back to the transaction and see that we have bought packing material for 100 Rand, two computers at 3,000 Rand each, and pens and pencils at 50 bucks. So, it's important for us, first of all, to realize how much and to what value we are buying on credit from this business. It said we are buying packing material for 100, we are buying two computers for 3,000 Rand each, so that's another 6,000, and we are spending 50 Rand on pen and pencils. So that means, in total, we are buying to the value of 6150 from this business. So the total of 6150 will go to creditors control, and now we have to post to the relevant places what it is we are buying. So, packing material we bought for 100 Rand. Two computers at 3,000 Rand, so 6,000 Rand. Is computers stationary? No. Is it packing material? No. Therefore, we are going to go to sundry accounts to process the 6,000 Rand. We should not word computers. Computers is classified as equipment. So equipment is the name of the sundry item. Also, we bought pens and pencils to 450 Rand, which makes a stationary entry needed. Okay. By realizing that 50 plus 100 plus 6,000 equals 6150, we have processed it correctly. Moving on to the 15th, received a check from El Semane to settle their account to date. The next line talks about a separate entry. So, in the first entry, there is no mention of an amount. So, it's important to first of all go back and realize that at the start of the month, El Semane owed us 2120. So, if you have your calculator, you could go and punch in 2120 as his opening balance. Then, in the debtor's journal, earlier on in this month, we sold to him to the value of 240 bucks. So we can add a further 240 Rand to give us the total amount that he is currently owing us. So 2360 is what he is giving us. That is going to be classified in the cash receipts journal. The date for this entry is the 15th. El Semane is giving us the money. Remember that he is a debtor of ours, he's debtor too. Under analysis of receipts, we're going to put this 2360 because that refers to money that we have received in cash. So we have to analyze it. The document number for this transaction would be a receipt, and we're just going to assume receipt 1. Also, are we going to put the 2360 in bank just yet? And the answer to that is no. Because also on the 15th, we're going to receive more money in the form of rent. So we can't just put it in just yet. The 2360 does not relate to sales or cost of sales, but it does relate to money received from a debtor. So we're going to put 2360 under debtor's control. And that's that transaction done. At this stage, El Simone owes us nothing. 
The second half of the 15th says that Mr. Jones, our tenant, paid his monthly rent of 6,300 Rand and we issued him with receipt 4. So, from reading that transaction, we'd hopefully agree that receipt 4 and this whole transaction will be processed in the CRJ. The 15th can be written again. The name of this gentleman is Mr. Jones, so he is going to go into details. He is not a debtor of ours, so we can ignore the folio and we're receiving 6,300 Rand from him. Because these two have been received on the same date, they get written separately under analysis, but we'll only walk to the bank once to deposit the money, once a day. So that means the total of those two can be summed up as 8660 and it will appear once under bank. We should also possibly underline this entry here to say that that is the end of the 15th receipts. This 6,300 Rand must also be allocated to a column that it relates to. It is not sales or cost of sales or debtors control, so 6,300 Rand will be posted to the sundry account and we are receiving rent income. It's important to note that you shouldn't just say rent because this relates to rent income. There's also rent expense possibility in the question and we can't get them too confused, so we must add in that word income. Moving on to the 18th, it says, received a check from, no, we've done that one, the 18th. Sold goods to W. Scholl, 450 Rand, and the cost price was 300 Rand. Right, this question could be a bit confusing because there's no mention as to whether it was a cash sale or a credit sale. However, because the question had Mr. W. Scholl as a debtor in our opening list of debtors, we can assume that this sale would be a sale on credit. So, we're going to go back to the debtor's journal, and we are on the 18th. W. Scholl can be listed in our details. He is our first debtor according to the list of debtors, and we can carry on with the numbering invoice 24. The question says that we sold 450 Rand with a cost price of 300, so 450 and 300 can be entered in the debtor's journal. Moving to the 24th, drew a check in favor of Guavu traders to settle half of our account to date. So this is almost the opposite of the, of the entry on the 15th where El Mane paid us. So we are going to first need to work out how much we owe Guavu traders. So we started the month owing him a thousand rand, right? Then also, during the month, we bought another 6150 from them. So we would add 6150 onto the opening balance to get a, a figure of 7150. However, after I've, re after I've just about done the whole transaction, are we asked to do the cash payments journal? And the answer is no. So that pretty much means that this entire transaction on the 24th must be omitted because we are not asked to do that journal. The last entry here on the 24th says the following. We bought a new Mazda for our sales rep as his area that he covers has doubled in the last month. 67,000 Rand and we received an invoice number 31. We have to decide are we buying this vehicle for cash or on credit? And the way to identify it is that it mentions invoice 31. That therefore means we are purchasing it on credit and would go to the creditors journal. The creditors journal would now say invoice 68 on the 28th we are buying a Mazda so we can use Mazda as the details. He is not previously mentioned as a creditor so we can give him the next number 3 as his allocation for his credit number. We are spending 67,000 on credit. It is not stationary or packing material so we would move to sundry as 67,000 and refer to it as vehicles. There we go. At this stage, because the question does not ask us to total the, to the, the journals, we have completed the posting of our transactions. Okay, so I, I trust that this explanation of these transactions and posting to journals assists you. In a second video, I'll speak about posting to the general ledger.